you found Why We Are Christians. My name is Kent Philpott. I'm here in San Rafael, California, but we're talking with Julie Castro. She happens to be in Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, we've, we've already filmed one program, and Julie has told us how she became a follower of Jesus, and now we're going we're gonna to go back and pick up what she's doing and uh, remind us, Julie, where you and I met. We met at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention in Nashville, Tennessee. In February of this year, 2020. That's right. That's right. And what and were you doing there? What were you, what was, what was going on? I was filming uh, shows for the program that I produce and host called Thirst No More and Bear Fruit. And if you don't mind, I'll sort of share how that all came about. As I mentioned in the first program, Thirst No More and Bear Fruit is the tagline for Fiesta Publishing, which was the business that I, I also have. And one day I was thinking, I actually was in the middle of the morning, and the Lord, I, was, I had this vision of, you know, water bottles that have like the little thing in the middle that have the fruit in it, you can put fruit in it? Oh, yeah. Okay, so I was like, oh, water bottle, thirst no more. Oh, yeah, thirst no more. Oh, and look at you got fruit in there. And you, when you thirst for knowledge, you bear fruit. <laughs> and that is how the name of the show came about, because it's not about me. It is about the word of God and what God is doing in people's lives and how he's doing it. And um, hopefully the knowledge that they even get from this program today, they're going to have some kind of knowledge that will be imparted to them and they can turn around and then bear fruit. So you, you are operating a publishing company, mm -hmm. yes to publishing, and you're doing your television work. The television uh, came about because one day I was on the phone with my girlfriend and I'm just marveling at what God is doing. He was opening up doors. I had lots of interviews after the book was published that I wrote. Um, and I said out loud, I wonder what's next. And I heard TV. And I said to my girlfriend, I said, you're not going to believe what I just heard. I heard TV. Now I am not one to sit around and say, oh Lord, is this you? Oh Lord, do I, should I fleece this? Is this, you know, is it going to be this way if you, you know, and no, I'm like, all right, yep, that's it. Let's go. And uh, through some trial and error, here I am doing the TV show. I only produce it once a month because I've, I host it. I pay for everything myself. So um, I, it's been for like three and a half years now that I've been doing the show. Wonderful. Now, do you, where, where do you where do you film uh, uh, film that? Well, it depends because, like, I met you and we we did the film uh, the show on uh, homosexuality. That's right. That's right. You interviewed me. Right. Uh, and so I'll meet people at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention. God will bring people to me, and so sometimes um, I will do in in studio, which is the cameraman's home. And we will interview, do interviews there. It just sort of depends. Um, I'm, I'm stepping out in faith. And I do believe that God is going to open up the door toward the end of this uh, year that the show will start airing twice a month. Okay. And so I actually have asked a woman, a black woman, to co-host with me so that we can talk about God's character the father's character. And so it's very, the show is very organic and we just bounce each other ideas off of one another and the Holy Spirit might give us a word for someone or, you know, here comes a scripture to back up what something else that someone else is saying. And that's just sort of how we roll. <laughs> okay. So we always thirst for knowledge. Okay. And, and once we have that knowledge, we impart it to others and hopefully that knowledge is quote unquote bearing fruit. It's gonna have an impact in their life. It doesn't matter if it's a secular book or if it's the Bible. There is knowledge to be imparted. Okay. All right, Julie. So 
So you're in Phoenix now. And I think I asked you this in a phone conversation before. I asked you about if you were going to a church, and I don't think you actually named a church that you were going to. No, no, I go where the Holy Spirit tells me to go. And because of everything that has been happening with the health and all that kind of stuff, I have just basically stayed home. I have a very different view. It's not the norm. I will tell you this, it's not the norm. But I seek God's face every single day. I live by Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So I read the word a little bit differently. I, when, I, when I'm talking to the Lord, I want to know, Lord, why is this happening? Or what do I need to know so that I will glorify you in whatever I say or do? And you know what? The answer is always in the word of God. People might call it Bible roulette, but a lot of times I let the Holy Spirit open up that word and I'll read both sides of the pages and I can pretty much guarantee you my answer is somewhere on one of those two pages. Or what happens is like you were talking about Isaiah and then all of a sudden you'll start researching Isaiah and then it'll take you over into another chapter somewhere else with the study Bible. And that's sort of how I live my life. And what I will tell you is this. Uh, I have a lot of female Christian friends. We are accountable to each other. Okay. We are accountable. This is not a lone, lone ranger kind of a thing. I have actually a husband and wife who I am accountable. We pray every Sunday together. If you want to call that going to church and having church, believe me, we have church. We have seen prayers being answered. So, you know what? And Manny, he's, he happens to be a pastor. I just don't happen to go to his church. But he's always imparting all kinds of ideas. So the accountability is the key. It, you know, um, and maybe someday God will have me go to a church. But honestly, Kent, I don't think that's where God has me because we are called to be make disciples of the nations. And if I'm in church, how can I then be told to go out to the street and turn right and look down the street and there's someone that needs my help. So a <clears throat> little bit different. You're a little different, Julie. But you know what? All of us are as Christians. That's the coolest thing because he has set us apart as a signet ring. And that is what he's made you one way. He's made me another way because how I might relate to someone might be totally different than you. And, but we're all part of the body of Christ, which is so cool. That's true. We're part of the body of Christ. So how, how are you feeling in the, um, in this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, that, um, it's over a hundred, over a hundred days now. Uh, and we're all a little bit uh, stir crazy. Yes. Uh, but every other day, I got to get in my car and drive someplace. <laughs> well, and I will tell you this, Kent, is that I pretty much stay at home. Okay. Uh, since I have retired, it's only been, what, three or four weeks now. I'm just sort of hunkering down, waiting on the Lord. I did get sick. I don't know if I actually had COVID or not. What I can tell you is, is that my sinuses were driving me crazy and, but it could have been allergies. It could have been after 40 years of, of working, your body's like, ah, oh, Julie, you can take it easy and rest a little bit. And that's really what I've been doing is just resting in the Lord. Okay. All right. Now, <clears throat> A lot of times people w w want to know what what do you read do you do you have any favorite favorite authors um you know what uh, again i read the word of god almost every day not every single day um i have because of interviewing people i get free books 
So right now I'm reading a 90 day devotional. It's called She is uh, Courageous. And, I re and it's all about different women in the Bible and like even like uh, Eunice Kennedy and how she came and started the, um, the, the program for people, Special Olympics. So people that have been used in various ways and it just sort of depends. Um, I always like a good espionage book. Gotta <laughs> love a good espionage. Espionage. Yes. And to be very honest, my favorite author is Daniel Silva. And I don't know if you're familiar with him, but- Never heard of him. Oh my goodness. Well, he is Jewish and his character is an art restorer of classics, but he's part of the Mossad. Woo! That he's what? Part of Mossad, you know, the Israeli- Oh, 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 oh yeah, the, yeah, like the uh, FBI, CIA. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, it, 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 those are good books. Once a year, he's got a new one. It always comes out right around my mom's birthday. So he does come to Phoenix, and we have gone to see him talk and listen to him. And he knows people in high places in Israel. And it is amazing how his fictional books so parallel real life. Uh huh. That'll get you going. That'll get you going. All right. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I'm open, like I said, but the Bible is the first and foremost. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so you, you, you didn't go to Bible college or seminary? Nope. Nope. I you am know, Holy self Spirit. Self-taught self person. I am Holy Spirit taught. Okay. You know what? I rely on the gifts of the Spirit to educate me. Um, now, that's not to say that I don't listen to people on television if I am led to turn the television on. And uh, because you don't ever know how God's going to use you to talk to you or share something with you. One of the things that he's really teaching me right now is to really be in tune with him. You know, there's lots of prophecies going out there and there's a lot of false prophets. And honestly, if you are not reading the word of God and testing what you are reading against what you're hearing, it, it's, it, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier, Kent, uh, what's happening in this world. This is a spirit. This is a spiritual thing that is going on and people need to realize that this is spiritual, but it's coming down in the natural and that's scriptural. Yes. Uh, yeah, you're right. The God of this world, uh, has blinded the minds and, you know, uh, we see biblically, you know, we see uh, disease, famine, war, uh, and uh, just chaos in, yeah. uh, in personal relationships, national, and so on. I, I want to ask you um, if, uh, how, how you, were you impacted? I, I don't want, Julie, I don't want to get political. I'm not a political person. I don't let people know how I vote. I don't care. We, in our little church, we have people on the far right, far left, most in the middle. I never mention a, a candidate. I don't care. Mm -hmm. No politician. I don't care what party is, gonna, is the savior. But um, the, the, uh, the death of George Floyd mm -hmm. uh, recently, uh, what, what were your feelings about everything there? Well, I, first of all, I'm going to say that uh, we need to stand under the sovereign God's spiritual constitution. And if we would do that as a pol any political party, one way or the other, if we looked at the spiritual constitution, we wouldn't have all of this going on. That being said, I was totally appalled, and it makes me want to cry, because I have a lot of female friends who are black and they are having to explain to their children what went on it, that is uncalled for the way it would the way everything went down. But what I will tell you this is that Romans 828 always takes precedence over any negative thing. And that is 
all things work to the good for those who love Christ Jesus. And so I have to look at it and say, you know what, Lord, this is a tragedy, but you know what, what is the good that is going to come out of it? And what I'm really hoping is that uh, we as a nation, as a group of people, believe believers or not, get on your knees and repent for all the things that we have said and done. I don't care what color you are, if you've done it to a white brother or a white sister, it doesn't matter, black brother, black sister, it doesn't matter. Repent for your thoughts, your anger, any hatred. It just, it really, it hurts me. And I know that it really hurts the Lord God Almighty. Yeah, it's a... <clears throat> It's, it's an incredible thing that has been exposed in our culture. I have an a, a essay that I wrote. It's called, I call it, I say, I am a racist and so are you. I think one of the things that I like to deal with is we have to look into all of our hearts and minds and see those areas that we yes. have been blind to. Yes. It's, it's just Everybody is that way. Nobody is as clean as, as, clean as the wind-driven snow, as we like to say. Mm -hmm. Nobody. And it, I think it forces us to take a look at ourselves and see, see the ugliness and the sinfulness that's in us all. We're all we all have that. We all have sinned. We do. And you know what? The, here's the deal. That's the ploy of the enemy is to bring fear. Because you might look, think one way, I think another way, you look one way, I look another way, guess what? The enemy would love nothing more. And do not, do not think that this is not a spiritual battle because it is. He, Lord, is, trying it is. To, yes, he I agree. is trying to cause division any way he can. And that just brings it, and it just brings, I was talking to my friend Crystal the other day, her having to explain to me her son wears dreadlocks. He's a, you know, 17 year old kid. Come on, you know, you're black and you got your dreadlocks, you know, so what, who cares? But this woman, she was white, saw, came around the corner and freaked out and pulled her purse close to her. Well, you know what? That's a ploy of the enemy because God is love and perfect love, which he is, casts out all fear. We need to understand who God is as our lover, as our savior, as our papa, as our dad. And then we can start working and having the dialogue. Yeah, the, I, I, the passage I think of is where it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and the powers, the rulers of this present darkness. That's Paul, I believe Ephesians chapter six. And uh, we, have to, we have to understand that it's not that other individual who has a different political identity. We, we deal with, with an enemy uh, that is far more cunning than that. And we just, we just don't see it, fall prey to it. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's, it's been rather devastating. Um, you were gonna say something, Julie. Well, no, I am right there with you, uh, Kent. And it really is. I, I... I always encourage people at the end of every show to read the word of God. Never, even if they don't know, know Jesus, read Psalms and read Proverbs because you know what? There's wisdom in there and you will start to see the, 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 the difference between the foolish man and the, the wise man. And, um, and you start to see the character of God and how, he loves us so much, but the enemy will just try and come in and cause division and diversion, diversion and anything else to keep our eyes off the Lord God Almighty. That's true. And That's you know what it all boils down to, Kent? It's a personal relationship. It's not a religious one. So how you relate to the Lord and how I relate to him are to totally different things. And that's cool. Yes, it is. Now, I got to say that you're, you're a unique person <laughs> and in, the, in the way you, you express your Christianity, Julie, and I really like it. And I, 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 you're strong in that, and, and uh, I, I just really wish you well in, in your ministry. 
Um, so. <laughs> and honestly, that's really where I come from is I really want to make the Bible um, alive and action and not the, you know, turn from your wicked ways or you're burning in hell. You know what? The God that I know is a gracious God and he is the one, his will is not that one, that not one should perish. So if we take that attitude and love them, oh, you can't, I can't tell you how many times I've been on ASU campus and I've seen those, you're going to hell and da, 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 da. You know really? what? Oh my goodness. They got them all over the place. And I used to love to go in there and just say, oh, well, tell me about the love of God. You know what? That'll shut them up. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's amazing to me, Julie, that anybody becomes a Christian given the very awful nature of a lot of what we see as Christianity today. I'm, I'm horrified at, at so much of it. We have a bad rap. <laughs> yes. We have a bad rap. And I honestly do believe, Kent, that that is part of what Thirst No More and Bear Fruit is all about. Good it's for you, Julie. The Good. Word of God and applying it to everyday life. Listen, my, I am not going to judge my son, but I rate, and I did not raise my son in church, but I, re I raised him with the Word of God. And I'm going to cry because he got in trouble. He got in some major, major trouble. But there are praying moms and praying grandmas and praying grandpas and praying dads. And those prayers will get your child through things. And my son, although he might not say, Jesus is my Lord and Savior, he has said to me on numerous occasions, I know that there is someone watching out for me. Mm -hmm. And that's the step. And then it's for God and my son, Manuel Castro, to come together and meet. And in fact, the Lord's even given me a vision of what I think is actually going to happen and how, it's going, how he's going to meet. My son is a scientist, so he's always, if you can't explain it with science, mm, sort of like, I'm not sure, but you can't explain faith, can you? No, no, it's a, it's, it's a mysterious, it's a mysterious element. Uh, and uh, we're, 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 we're constantly surprised as well. Uh, I identify with you in a lot of ways. I don't fit into a lot of um, the, the Christianity that I, I see, that I see in the world, uh, but I, I still identify with, um, with Christianity. I just wrote an essay called, um, and I just published um, just today, called uh, uh, about uh, bad experiences in the church. I, I imagine a, a big crowd, and I say, anybody here have a bad experience in a church? Everybody's hands go up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh oh I've had I'm the pastor of a church in my 36 year at Miller Island Baptist Church and I have bad experiences in my own church. Oh and my it's gosh. It's amazing that anybody can hang 52% of Christians do not attend a, a brick and mortar church. Well, and you know what that's what I and it goes back to the relationship part of it. You know, I was actually asked to leave a church. <laughs> But that's our, that's well, I'm all not right. surprised at that. No, 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 honestly, I'm not. But and but and you know what? And but don't be hurt by it. Anybody who has been asked to leave or been hurt by people in churches, don't be offended. That's probably one of the best things that we as Christians can really get into our spirit is do not be offended when other people hurt you. Or if you've hurt someone and they haven't told you and you don't understand why the person's not talking to you anymore, you know what? Offenses happen and the enemy, that's what he uses to weasel in there and, and cause problems. But yes, you're absolutely right, Ken. Who hasn't been hurt in church? Yes, it's, it's a common thing. You're going to be with, with people. And as a, a pastor, I, 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 I have to see it over and over again. And so I just wrote this little essay uh, I'll send it to you, Julie. Okay. I'll send it to you. And um, I think I have your email. I'm going to put you on my email list. Cool. And uh, you can just 
you don't have to read anything, but uh, I'm going to send you that. But uh, anyway, uh, I'm really glad, Julie, that we've had this chance. So we've got two or three more minutes. Okay. I, I want to get, I'm going to get a little bit, a little more to the end. I'm watching my clock. All right. And, uh, and I want to hear the, the essential thing that you would like the people that watching this interview, you, you, you'd like them to carry away with them. Okay. Okay. Well, for, first of all, Kent, one of the things that you said in our interview regarding um, deal, working with uh, homosexuals is welcoming but not affirming. Exactly, exactly. And I'm gonna tell you what, I have held on to those words because it is. it doesn't matter if you're homosexual, it doesn't matter uh, what your orientation is, you know, those kinds of things. It doesn't matter if they don't believe in Jesus. You wanna welcome them, but not affirm the sin. Because guess what? We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. Exactly. And you know what? When we can take the log out of our own eye before we take the speck out of someone else's, and even with all of this that is going on, specks have got to be taken out of other people's eyes, and people need to start doing a little self-introspection. And what better way to do it than let the Lord who loves each of us so much and will do it in such a gentle way. Now, uh, it's not to say that he might not take that sledgehammer and clunk you over the head because you're not getting it. But you know what? He is a gracious and merciful God. You're right. And he wants to have a personal relationship with every single person. You're right, Julie. Wow. I never would have thought that uh, that that event back in Nashville uh, would uh, would would result in this, but I'm I'm surely I'm so glad that it did, and I just want to say to you, Julie, the Lord bless you. I hope a lot of people see this program. It'll go up on YouTube after Amen. it shows in a local way. We're hoping to get your program on our local Marin TV. Amen. You do the same for me in Phoenix. I don't know. You know what? Interestingly enough, a prophet is without honor in their own hometown. We do not have uh, public access here that is like this. It has to be government or education related. So, oh, well. unfortunately. Yes, I understand. Well, Julie, the Lord bless you. Thank, thank you. you. you too. Thank you. Kent, thank you so much. Have a blessed day. I can't wait to see what God's going to do and how he's going to use you going forward over the next 36 years. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so long, my dear sister. So long. Bye-bye.